it's been a few days since Apple's 8th of March event and we've seen some real life comparisons now between Apple and Intel and AMD. So just how well does Apple compete? And also in this video, I'll be asking, has the iMac Pro lineup disappeared forever and will it be missed? Results at Geekbench show the sheer power of the M1 Ultra Mac Studio. It easily outstrides the Core i9-12900K in multi-core workloads and is not that far behind in single-thread performance. This justifies Apple's claim that their new CPU outperforms Intel's fastest desktop CPU. Meanwhile, AMD are set to release a new chip, the 5800X 3D, which is said to outperform the 12900K. This new bad boy from AMD is rumored to be coming out in April and AMD announced this chip at CES in January and whilst we have to wait and see some benchmarks before drawing any conclusions, it's turning out to be a tighter race between the three companies than anyone could have predicted this time last year. Now whatever happens, more choice is usually a great thing for consumers. Now onto graphics, Apple had the audacity to claim the that their graphics were equivalent to the RTX 3090 for the M1 Ultra and equivalent to the RTX 3060 Ti for the M1 Max. Now that's something I didn't mention in the previous video, but it's an interesting point to follow. Now there is no simple way of comparing performance across different platforms, but these claims are plausible. One thing we can check is, well, if you have an M1 Max chip, the M1 Ultra should have twice the performance of that if the Ultrafusion fabric is really that good. We can check that for the CPU. And yes, the M1 Max is about half the performance of the Geek Bench score of the M1 Ultra, which means that the entire system should be scaling two to one. And that's really amazing performance. The graphics and the neural accelerator and the video processing should all be scaling up nicely too. One piece of analysis which I've seen, I've seen quite a lot of reviews over the last few days and one piece of analysis which I saw uh, was from Max Tech's channel and he suggested that the video processing on the RTX series doesn't quite scale up as well. So it's really a case of diminishing returns by the time you get up to the RTX 3090. I found this pretty persuasive. I'll link to that video in the description and that should not be an issue with the M1 Ultra Let's talk about configurations. Apple have multiple multiple configurations for the Mac Studio. To get the full performance, you'd need to go for the option with maximum memory and also maximum graphics cores. This will add extra to the base price. When it comes to memory on my system, I do sometimes get to the end of 64 gigabytes of memory that I have uh, for some of the AI accelerated tasks in Premiere Pro but I can work around that by either batching my work or increasing the RAM to 128 gigabytes if I have to. Now you can't upgrade your system like that with the Mac Studio. So think carefully before choosing your configuration. It's currently at least four, it's currently at least a four week wait on the Apple website for deliveries, but I have already seen placeholders on Amazon for the Mac Studio and the Studio Display. And if previous launches are anything to go by, once Amazon does have stock, it may have better availability than even the Apple site, particularly if you're rocking Amazon Prime. Now, in my view, Apple is becoming more like Windows, but in a good way. You have now the Mac Mini, which you can configure, the entry-level Mac Studio M1 Max, and the Mac Studio M1 Ultra. This and much more is the kind of choice Windows users have enjoyed for quite a long time. And uh, of course, you can choose a monitor of your liking on the Windows platform. It now looks like the iMac Pro and the 27-inch iMac have gone for good. We don't know that for certain, but now users have two displays to choose from, the Studio Display and the Pro Display XDR. What's more, the Studio Display is compatible with devices all the way back to some of them from 
devices from 2016. Now that's going to add center stage to setups with these older devices. And of course, the awesome audio quality, which comes with the studio display. That includes Adobe Atmos and spatial audio. If this isn't enough to attract you, the LG 5K ultrafine monitor for iMac, for Mac, is still available, but you'd now need to go to the LG website to find it. Now, this choice is what Apple calls modularity. On Windows, it's what we would call normal, like nothing new, just the standard choice, that's it. But the energy efficiency, which comes from Apple's decision to use ARM architecture, is like nothing we've seen on the desktop Windows environment. Let's take a look at the Studio Display and compare it with the XDR Display, the or the Pro Display XDR. The Studio Display has extensive connectivity, very similar to the XDR, but it also features the 12 megapixel camera with center stage and audio output, both of which are absent from the XDR. The Studio Display is 5K Retina Display, 27 inches, and the XDR is a mighty 32 inches Retina Display also, and 6K. The Studio Display is $15.99 base price, and the XDR is $49.99 base price. They're color calibrated and cover most of the P3 gamut. 218 pixels per inch, 600 nits brightness, peak brightness, and it's a 10-bit display with True Tone technology. It can be configured with nano texture glass, as can the XDR monitor. It has nine available reference modes. These include P3 600 nits, that's Apple Display, HDTV, NTSC PAL and CCAM. It also has Digital Cinema P3 DCI and Design and Print P3 D50, as well, of course, as Internet and Web sRGB. The XDR display is 32 inches. It also uses IPS and IPS display, which almost certainly is manufactured by LG, as I think also is the studio display. Not sure about that. But the aspect ratio is 16 to 9. XDR actually stands for extreme dynamic range. And they say that it has very, very good viewing angles. The color gamut is P3 wide color gamut. Again, 10-bit color. Contrast ratio up to a million to one. And this one has a thousand watts XDR brightness, 1600 HDR brightness, and those are nits, uh, and SDR 500 nits. The available reference modes, there are 11 of these, and in addition to those on the found on the studio display, it also has Pro Display XDR, P3 1600 nits, and HDR, that's P3 ST 2084. Now, one of the things that it says here is that the following features require Mac OS Catalina 10.15.2 10 or later. And included in that are the reference mode selection. Now, I would imagine that this is going to be the same as well for the studio display. The XDR display has a custom mount which costs $1,000 and which allows feather light height and tilt adjustments and you can also pivot into portrait or you can get a vase amount using apple's adapter the studio display does come with three mounting options these are baked into the design so choose carefully you can't change after you've selected the the model there's a standard tilt stand then there's a 400 dollars stand which allows for tilt and height adjustment and there's also a vase amount option, 100 millimeters. The weight of the studio display is five and a half kilos or about 11 pounds. And the XDR display is seven and a half kilos or about 16 and a half pounds. Now, vase amounts that work well with the studio display may not be sufficient in terms of size and weight capacity with the X XDR display. However, it should be not difficult to find vase amounts for the XDR display. I'd recommend a gas spring mount for easy adjustment. Now, finally, will the iMac Pro and the 27 inch iMac, which have both disappeared from the Apple website, will they be missed? I think not. I think with the available choice, 
I think most buyers will find an alternative with the new displays and the new computer models. But I think there may be room for another display, maybe in between the studio display and the XDR, perhaps something with a higher refresh rate or HDR. There are already rumors running around of a 24 inch display, maybe a, an, an update to the XDR display, supposedly all coming from L LG. But we shall find out what happens in due course. I got the cash in the bag, stadium pack. Born a rock star in this life, gone live it up on the attack. Baby, I'm bad. I just wanna get caught up in this life, I'm crazy.